All right, hello. We are getting back to the How to Play series of videos, and there is a ship's action about to happen here in Blue Water Navy, but I want to talk a little bit about capital ships. Uh, in the last video, I talked some about them, and thanks to Alcal on Board Game Geek, I realized there is more relevant information that won't likely come to light in the rest of this video series naturally. So, any ship that has the B modifier right there, B means big or huge, as I said, is a capital ship. However, it's also true that a unit with an aircraft symbol, here we have, uh, I think it's the Victorio Veneto and the Moskva, the aircraft symbol also indicates capital ship with the exception of U.S. amphibious vehicles. These are the, uh, like the Iwo Jima, Bella Wood type landing ships that the U.S. has. They have helicopters on them, um, but uh, they do not, uh, the helicopters do not indicate that these are capital ships. The amphibs are just amphibs. They take damage the same as anything else. They're just cooler than the rest of the world's amphibs, right? So these are capital ships, and as I said in the last video, when a capital ship is hit, it has to be by a natural 10, and then you roll dice to see what type of damage it suffers. One thing I want to make clear, you may roll three or even four dice to see what kind of damage a capital ship suffers. If any of the dice rolled are a 10 or fall within the range indicated on the player aid, uh, if, any, if one or more of the dice fall within that range, the capital ship is sunk. If none do, it is damaged. If you roll four damages, it doesn't lose a step and then get sunk. Okay, a capital ship when it's hit is either damaged or sunk. If it's already damaged, then it's going to be sunk on another damage, right? But um, so that I think is important. And um, so these are uh, these are capital ships, and also a ship with an L modifier. That L stands for limited ammunition. We, I won't be going into uh, that. It'll come up a little bit later, but. I won't be going too deeply into that, but that's also a capital ship, and you, so you need to know that, okay? Um, another thing about uh, capital ships is that the uh, capital ship that has an aircraft symbol has an intrinsic detection capability. It, it has, so for the, for the Russians, it's helicopters, uh, for the Italians, it's helicopters. That does not apply for the amphib units for the United States. Capital ships with aircraft symbols, uh, which are generally carriers of some type, have intrinsic detection, which is gonna come into play um, when we do the ship's action here. Uh, I just want to make you aware of that at this point. The intrinsic detection is like the uh, E2C Hawkeye that the American carriers have the, with the radar dome flying up. Uh, it's an airborne early warning system that uh, attempts to detect enemy uh, ships and planes coming into the area. Okay, so uh, enough of capital ships. I hope that made sense and was clear. Now it is a ship's action. Uh, as we've said before, any task force that has a good detection marker will complete its step one of the ship's action first. Uh, so that means either a move into a different sea zone or an anti-submarine warfare attack, or if the task force has amphibious units, it can begin the landing procedure. So that's what the Soviets are going to do here. They are going to begin the invasion of Trondheim. And when that happens, you mark the task force as landing. Uh, i got to find the counter for that. So the task force will be marked as landing. I'll find that in the counters up here. I think it's admin. No, it's USSR counters and uh, landing there we go now what the landing means is that at the next ship's action since it's already marked as beginning the landing you're going to resolve the invasion and we will get to that eventually that's not going to happen here in this turn it'll happen in a future turn um, resolving the landing is fun and a very cool part of this game um, so what the, and so the, the, the good detection task forces take their movement first. Soviets go before U.S. or before NATO. So the Soviets uh, begin landing. If they were not already detected, they would now be poorly detected, and they would have to take a roll to see if they were uh, good detected. But uh, they're already good detected, so that doesn't matter. 
uh, I'm sorry, I keep clicking over here. I'm going to go ahead and put the good detection marker up at the top. So the next task force that has an opportunity to do something is the uh, task force down here that has good detection on it. And what that task force is going to do is conduct anti-submarine warfare. It's already got a good detection. It can't hurt. It's got a damage Victor 1 out here that it wants to complete the prosecution of. And uh, as we said before, it has uh, 9, 16 ASW points plus 2 for the carrier. So it has 18, so it's rolling 4 dice plus 1 uh, in an attack on the victor. If the, if the unit was not detected, it would become poorly detected now. And if it was only poorly detected, it would become a good detection. Everybody, the sub would know it was there. But everybody knows it's there already. So here goes the attack. And uh, there are uh, two rolls that are sufficient to cause damage to this Victor. A modified 9 damages it. And so, since the Victor does not get a save and already has damage, it is sunk. So, good for the U.S. That's what we hoped would happen. No task forces have poor detection markers. Uh, the task forces that are not detected now act. And task force... Uh, Viking here, they think, yeah, you know, this is completely insane, but we're going to do it so we can show what happens when task forces end up in the same sea zone. And they're going to go ahead and sail right into the Norwegian Sea. Now, don't do this if you're playing this game in your NATO. Don't stick your task force out there, uh, because what's going to happen on a future action is the Soviet ships are going to get to fire their anti-ship missiles at it, and they're probably going to tear it up. But that's what I want you to see. And so and also what the procedure is when two task forces with combat air patrol fighters and intrinsic detection end up in the same sea zone. So we're going to go ahead and walk right through those steps. All right. And I'm going to get to the actual rules and make certain that I follow them correctly because I have a tendency to get loose and flaky and skip things. So... Um, Note that there is no, there are no units on patrol here. There's no Soviet unit on patrol in the sea zone. If there was, they would have the opportunity to attempt a detection, um, but that is not the case. So step two is to degrade existing task force detections that were not placed in step one. So both the American uh, task force and the Soviet task force that have good detections are now. Um, degraded okay and the next is you roll for task force detection with each roar sat on the map there are no satellites out here for the soviets so that does not happen the fourth step is you re resolve fighter versus fighter combat due to the movement of task forces so as we've seen before the soviets have uh yak 38 forger aircraft and the americans have f-14 tomcats in this case, both of these fighters are spent, and there is a negative modifier for fighters with combat air patrol when they are spent. Uh, in this case, the modifier is the same for each side, so it isn't necessarily going to encourage the um, it isn't necessarily going to encourage the Russians to come out and fight. But we're going to go ahead and do another another little pretend thing here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pretend that the Yaks are not spent. Uh, I'm not sure what unit was spent that I just clicked on spend on, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pretend that these yaks are not spent. And they're going to actually stand up and fight. So the yaks are going to roll one die with no modifier. They have an eight defense. The tomcats are going to, uh, initially they're going to roll two dice because, uh, or initially they're going to roll four dice, I'm sorry, because a fighter element rolls its full complement in fighter versus fighter combat. But, the fact that they are spent is going to cause them to uh, to lose some uh, potential. And so when cap is spent, when cap is already spent, you lose two dice. So, uh, yeah, cap, so the, there's going to be two dice for the Tomcats against one for the Soviets. It's still not a fair fight. But here, so here go the, uh, NATO, here's the NATO roll. Uh, yeah, that's bad for the Soviets. And here are the Yaks. And, oh yeah, they performed about as badly as you could imagine they would perform. So, uh, yeah, the Yaks are eliminated. That's what happens in pretend land here when you do things for the sake of it. Uh, in most situations, uh, the Soviets would never have stood up for that fight. Um, but I wanted you to see it happen, okay? So, uh, 
fighter versus fighter combat has happened. And then you resolve interception and cap responses to intrinsic defense units and then resolve their searches. So the, the Russians don't have any fighters left. And uh, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. does. They've got some fighters left, and so they're going to roll on the, with the on the fighter combat versus maritime patrol table. And uh, the Soviets, um, the uh, yeah, so the Soviets don't have a role. I should be saying the Soviets don't have fighters left, so they're not rolling. They're not going to be able to. Uh, shoot down the American intrinsic de detection units, but the Americans have a chance, um, and so the Tomcats are going to go ahead and roll, and uh, oh, you know what? Disregard all that. In order for the American fighters to engage the Russian intrinsic defense units, they have got to be, uh, they've got to be fresh. So the U.S. fighters will not be going out hunting for the Soviet units. And so what that means is um, both, both task forces still have their intrinsic detection, and we're going to go ahead and we'll make a detection roll looking for the task forces. And so uh, that is when you are, uh, when you look at the task force detection on the player aid, upper left, it indicates there if it's a U.S. carrier detecting, each carrier gets two dice. If it's another carrier, they get a single die. So, you know, the U.S. has this big technological advantage here. We've got those big, um, those big E-2C planes flying around up there. Uh, the Soviets have some helicopters trying to help, I think. And so the carrier, the U.S. carrier is going to get a roll. It's going to get two dice. It's got a three and a four. Uh, both a three and a four would be a poor detection and may upgrade any poor detection to good. Uh, the task force owner would decide where to place a poor detection if there were choices. But when it's an upgrade, the rolling player decides. So back to knowing where they are. Now the Soviets get their one die, and that is a whopper. Uh, so they get a sudden good detection on Task Force Viking, which is, uh, which we're going to see in a future video, is bad for Task Force Viking. Uh, they are going to be victimized, I think. And uh, so we have done step five. We've resolved interception and cap responses to intrinsic detection units and then resolved their searches. I think I need to, at some point, put uh, an element of what interception is into one of these videos. That has not happened in this game yet. We'll get to that. And now you remove spent markers from all non-MP air units, except for air units that are based with heavy damage. So uh, the American uh, carrier here carrier here has uh, two spent units, and they are no longer spent. And the carrier strike group has one spent unit which is no longer spent, and the Soviets would have a no longer spent unit of fighters. This spent aircraft here is maritime patrol, as is this one, and uh, over here the Soviets only have patrol aircraft remaining, so they do not become unspent. And that is the completion of the ship's action, and the next uh, operations point that is going to be spent is in fact a Soviet uh, operations point, even though uh, they're behind on the track is in turn order. They're the ones that are up. And uh, but I am going to leave this video to stand as is um, for time purposes for myself. I've got to go have dinner. I will uh, almost certainly be back at some point tonight to do a video. And what we're going to see in the next video is going to be what happens when the Soviet task force launches a ship-to-ship -ship missile attack against the American task force. And uh, that's going to be interesting. All right. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know any mistakes I've made and I will address them in a future video. And uh, yeah, have a good day.